the next thing is you got to figure out what that marketing plan looks like. You know, how, how are you going to title it? You know, I think that with webinars, it's very important to think about how you're going to title the webinar to number one, get people's attention, but number two, make sure they understand that this isn't going to be boring or a waste of their time or any of that, right? We want to make sure that they're going to click on the webinar. Think about your titling. Three things, five things, six things, whatever. If those are always the best performing if you are going to give people something tangible and concrete. If I said, we're going to give you 37 reasons not to use a managed services provider, you're not going to, nobody wants to sit and listen to 37 reasons for anything. So think about what your titling is going to be. Then I want you to think about how you're going to actually approach the, the marketing piece. Certainly there's drip campaigns that you want to do. We have done direct mail. We have done AdWords with, uh, you know, uh, a landing page behind it where they can register there. We do retargeting ads on Facebook. Y'all are all insurance agents. So I know for a fact, you have to have seen the Facebook retargeting we're doing right now for the boot camp on June 22nd. It's invading my newsfeed and I'm the one who did the ad. But you want to figure out and have a multi-pronged approach, figure out and hit people where they are. One of the reasons why the short one that we do right now has been successful for us is because we retarget. So I'm going to, I'm going to give you the actual mechanics of how we built that here in a, in a second, once we get through, but um, once you get past titling, you have to figure out, you, you know, what your, what are you going to bring to the table, right? We are not valuable on these calls other than stories and claims scenarios, period. That's why people want to come to listen to the law enforcement person. That's why people want to listen to the attorney. So think about claims scenarios that you know of firsthand that you can address. Think about who your audience is as well, okay? Our CRM is full of a lot of contractors, service contractors for obvious reasons. I talk about it all the time. It's one of my preferred classes of business. Most service contractors want nothing to do with a conversation around cyber insurance. They don't think they have an exposure, right? So the claim scenario that I'm going to use if I've got a bunch of service contractors on a webinar is about the target data breach because it was a service contractor that caused it. So all of these people who don't want cyber because they don't think they have an exposure, yet they have people with iPads and phones that are out taking payment every single day via credit, debit card, whatever else out in the field, not to mention all the personally identifiable information they have back at the office, that's just on their employees. If they're running a credit operation where they're putting these things on 90 days, same as cash or interest free for a year or whatever, they probably have client information there as well. And by the way, cyber isn't just electronic. It includes some paper files and they would be susceptible to having those. And you pick your claim scenario up front, knowing who your audience or, or scenarios, knowing who your audience is going to be. I'm not going to spend time talking about the TJ Maxx breach or the city of Atlanta or the city of Louisiana if I'm talking to a room of service contractors. I'm going to talk about the target breach. If I'm talking to a group of just normal businesses, I'm going to use examples that are relevant to them. It doesn't need to be shock and awe. The city of Atlanta being shut down for a week or whatever it was and costing tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars is not something that the person who owns the dry cleaning shop in the strip mall down the street is going to be able to relate to. That I mean, it's apples and Volvos at that point. The truth of the matter is that dry cleaner down the street is the one who's being targeted more than the city of Atlanta is, and they don't even realize that. Thank <laughs> you.